Welcome back to Power Lunch. Time for the final three stock lunch of 2023. And today we are going to look back at the biggest moves of 2023. And first up is Salesforce. It's the biggest gainer in the Dow Industrials, doubling in value over the past 12 months. So here with our trades is Boris Schlossberg, BK Asset Management's Managing Director of FX Strategy. He's also a CNBC contributor. And of course, back with us here on set is Surat Sethi of DCLA. Boris, you first. The thoughts on the best performing stock in the Dow, CRM. Well, I think there's a reason why CRM is best performing. It's really, really well positioned for this new economy. It has a very, very deep set of tools for all of the business transactions that are being done online. So it essentially helps people close business deals digitally. Um, and its newest product, uh, which is the um, Einstein Chat GPT, is just a sort of perfect example. It's already got 17% penetration of the Fortune 100. Um, it's an AI tool, and AI is kind of like the perfect use case for Salesforce automation and CRM um, techniques. So I think from every aspect, it's really a great stock. It is, however, very expensive and also very, very volatile. People have to understand that during the pandemic, the, the multiple contraction was from 30 to 15. So any kind of a tiny bad piece of news could be very, very dangerous for the stock. My view is I love the stock, but I would much rather participate here with long-term options. So if you go 2015, you buy the 250, 300 call spread, it costs you 20 to make 50. I think that's probably the right way to trade it if you want to ride the trend up and control your risk going forward in 2024. Sarat, what do we think about Salesforce? Is this the way that you would play cloud slash AI? So I do. I like the company. We don't own it. I think Boris is absolutely correct. You buy it on the dip. So if you don't own it now, wait for it. Because at any time in earnings, if they miss, the stock has, is extremely volatile. All right. Let's move on then to a stock that's among the top losers in the S&P for 2023. It's actually Dollar General, the former darling. The discount retailer on deep discount itself down 45 percent year to date. Boris, is this an opportunity to pick it up? I think so. I mean, DG destroyed its business by basically having understaffed stores and inventory strewn all over the place and just killed the brand for a while. They have new management that's really trying to work on that, to try to basically restaff the stores and re-inventory the, um, the product and make it you know, much more viable and attract more traffic. This is the first quarter where they've had traffic that actually increased, but the same store sales are still lower because smaller ticket items. On the bright side, they're opening up about 800 new stores in rural areas where they could be like the only merchant of choice. And their inventory problems, obviously, on new stores are not going to be a problem. It's really a question of whether can management execute. The stock is up 30 percent from the lows. Uh, and if management can execute and increase traffic, I think they can rebuild it. I mean, the bottom line is that discount discount uh, business is, is a very, very good business model. They, their business model is not the problem. It was execution that's the problem. So. That's really a bet on new management. If you want to go that way, I think you have a good chance here. Mm, what do you think, Sarah? I'm just not a fan of the retail side at this point. I just think where the consumer is and the money being spent is going to be very specific. So I think the stock's down. I think it's still got a ways to go. This could be one of those let them execute first and then buy as opposed to buy before execution. All right. And for the mm -hmm. final three-stock lunch trade of the year, it isn't a stock. It's a commodity, and it's gold. It's up 14% so far this year. It's on track for its best year since 2020. It's not the digital stuff. It's the real hard. You use it in electronics. You buy it in bullion or cubes and coins. Is this going to be a trade for 2024, Boris? It could be. I mean, I think the greatest thing about gold is actually the price action, right? It's trading very, very well. It seems to be, accumu you know, it seems to be accumulating all the way to the end of the year. However, gold is just notorious for fake outs. It's been flirting with this 2100 all-time highs three, four times already. To me, a real buy here, if you're kind of a long-term trader, is going to be if it breaks 2100 and holds it on a monthly closing basis. Then yeah, I think you have a lot of confidence, as well as the fact that if you kind of look at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange futures market, and if it does 250,000 or more contracts per day, that's also going to be a very good sign there's going to be a lot of volume coming in. I mean, ultimately, gold is basically a fear trade on fiat. Right. So if we have any problems with the deficit, if we have any problems with interest rate coverage of the deficit, all of those things and the geopolitics that could happen in 2024 could definitely make it skyrocket. Right. But I'd like to see the price confirm all of this movement ahead of time. So it's not a fake out again. All right. So so Surat, without let's not talk about gold for a second. Let's talk about silver. I was going to say Bitcoin, which some people are calling the catch up <laughs> trade to gold because it hasn't been as much of a focal point. So I think gold needs to lead before silver starts to catch up. It's always been that case. But I do like the gold idea. We own it. 
To your word of 2024 geopolitics, that's why you want gold as part of your portfolio. We own it through tech resources in Wheaton, but I think you want to have it as part of your diversified portfolio. All right. That's the final three-stock lunch of 2023. Boris Schlossberg, thanks for closing out the year for us.